Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. As we uh, get going here and take, there I am, I popped in and popped out. Okay, so let's um, <clears throat> get going with regards to my uh, updated snowfall forecast map. My confidence level is moderate and uh, strengthening at this point. So I feel pretty good about the, what I've come up with in terms of numbers. I've gotten a little more specific now as we're inside 48 hours. I think it's you know, time to uh, get away from words like few and several and many and just go to um, some more specific numbers. So this is what I'm thinking at this point. Uh, as far as, uh, first off, I'm going to cover this region, then I'm going to go to South Central Pennsylvania and uh, North Central Maryland, which is where I also have um, some viewers too. And then we're going to widen out and you can see what's going on. All right, so we're talking about a coating to an inch for southeastern New England, eastern Long Island, and the New Jersey shore east of the Garden State Parkway. And then it goes over to rain. Uh, one to two inches uh, for, uh, in, start to go into the interior of southeastern New England and into southern New England into southeastern Connecticut, across uh, Long Island and Suffolk County, uh, except the northwest. And then west of the parkway, and then you can draw a line and cut uh, central and southern New Jersey in half, and we're talking one to two inches. Two to three inches in an area that includes um, Philadelphia, Trenton, uh, on up, uh, basically up I-95, uh, and the Route 1 corridor through New Jersey, across New York City, uh, Westchester County uh, in the Hudson Valley, northeastern New Jersey, uh, in through southern Connecticut, uh, and then going northeastward from there uh, into central and northeastern Connecticut. Three to five inches in a band that uh, covers uh, interior eastern Pennsylvania, northwest New Jersey. You start to go north of the Hudson Valley toward Route 84 and points north, and then on up uh, north of 84 uh, into northwestern Connecticut, three to five. And then I did include an area of five to seven inches across, uh, say, the northern half of Pennsylvania, including northeastern PA. You get into the Catskills, the Hudson Valley, as you start to approach Poughkeepsie and points north, northwestern Connecticut, and uh, into uh, northwestern Massachusetts. Now, uh, for uh, south uh, central uh, Maryland, uh, uh, south central Pennsylvania, and north central Maryland, which uh, is part of ssstormchasers.com uh, and their area. So I'm thinking that there, most of that area will probably get three to maybe as much as five inches, but I think you have to start going north of uh, 76 and 176 to get closer to the five, and the numbers as you go further south will be closer to the three. There's going to be some variation in this, and then you start to get into north central Maryland. I'm going to two to three inches, but when you get to Baltimore and south of there, we're probably talking more on the lines of, you know, one to maybe three in some isolated spots, and then south of uh, Beltsville, you start to get down toward the Washington, D.C. area, and we're talking about maybe a coating to an inch or so. So let's look at the models now, and we'll show you what the model snowfall forecasts are. This is the GFS model from today. Um, you know, it's kind of got a smoothed out look, and I went a little bit higher than the GFS did in, in the southern areas of Pennsylvania, but then, and also in the northern areas. But I'm kind of even with the GFS uh, when you go to um, northern New Jersey, into Connecticut, and uh, into the Hudson Valley. By the way, notice uh, in areas to the north, in upstate New York and in, New, in northern New England, don't get more on, on the GFS model. And this is because it lifts the warm front very quickly from south to north. So everybody pretty much has the same amount of time where temperatures are below freezing. And there's no real delay. The front just goes right up at a, at a steady rate. So everybody gets about the same amount of precipitation and therefore generates about the same amount of snow. Uh, the NAM model uh, disagrees with this to some degree, and we'll show you that. And I tend to think that this may be a little closer to the truth. Uh, so, you know, I would probably, you know, massage up toward the NAM, but not completely buy it. Uh, but the NAM is more aggressive um, over time. Uh, it has some uh, significant amounts even down into south central Pennsylvania, but it does skew the amounts higher across northern Pennsylvania and uh, through upstate New York and interior New England. And it actually does have higher, more aggressive amounts even into New Jersey 
And in the areas around New York City, it's producing even some three or four inch amounts across Long Island and southernmost Connecticut and in the city itself. I, I don't think that's an unreasonable possibility, uh, given what we're dealing with um, synoptically. OK, and let me just see if the Canadian is in yet um, and we'll see if. OK, so now the Canadian is in and it's actually gotten less aggressive over time, too, but it has much more of a blanket look of three to four inch amounts, um, except a little bit lower to the south. So it sort of suggests that the warm front just kind of moves straight along with no hesitation. That usually is not the case. OK, it usually is something that kind of holds it up, at least temporarily. And, you know, as we mentioned yesterday in these warm front cases, uh, you wind up, um, you know, sometimes you can get a wave on the warm front and that slows things down. And, and I think that's what the NAM is showing here. If uh, we've got the map up for one o'clock tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry, that's ca the Canadian. Hold on. Even the Canadian shows it a little bit. It just generates less liquid amounts. Let me just switch over to the NAM because I think that's the better one to look at here. And we'll take a look at this. So now this is at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. The NAM is also faster uh, with everything. So if you look here on, on the map, it's a little hard to see. So I'll, I'll outline it for you. Okay. But, you know, here are the isobars that basically go around the low. OK, and I'm, I'm smoothing it out a little bit. But right here, you've got this bulge. OK, right in there. So that suggests to me that there's some kind of little wave that's d developing uh, on what will be the warm front. OK, and I'm going to uh, generally view the warm front. I'm prob probably not going to be able to draw it too accurately because of the way the model strews, uh, has the isobar stretched out. But, you know, it, it, it reacts to the fact that there are mountains here. So it's got, it does something like this. So if you get a little bit of a wave on it, it's going to pinch the cold air slightly back through Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey, and into the Hudson Valley, and even uh, over parts of, um, you know, even, even along the coast, very briefly. But, you know, I want you to remember that in an instance like this, where you're dealing with warm air advecting from one point to another, and, and, and it's very strong warm air advection going from one point to another, that uh, if you buy yourself an extra hour of snow, uh, you, that could easily be an extra couple of inches. You can get an extra hour, an hour and a half of, of snow falling. You know, that's where you wind up with some unusual amounts occurring. I don't know that that's going to happen, uh, but um, it's always possible with these warm fronts. And you can see here on the NAM by 10 o'clock, you know, it's already, according to the NAM, a, a large portion of the area has changed over to to sleet and then to rain uh, as you go south. And in the pink area would be where it might be freezing rain or freezing rain and sleet, uh, particularly up through uh, northern New Jersey and in the Hudson Valley. From the standpoint of icing, the closer you get to the coast, the less that's going to be a problem because even if it, it and, and even if it is, we're talking about a very short period of time with temperatures in inland areas that'll be trapped below 32, and then. I think that everybody's just going to rise up uh, into the 40s. And, and when we uh, set the map uh, back in motion, and you'll see here, it's all rain. And actually, the rain tapers off uh, quite a bit after noon, 1 o'clock. And it's going to wait for now the cold front to come to approach and come through here Sunday morning, which it does. And you can see on the NAM, it produces uh, some showers. Now, the NAM is also indicating that uh, the, the cold air coming back might change the rain briefly over to some sleet or wet snow before it ends. That's the dark blue you see here. And the yellow that's embedded in the dark blue, I think, would be sleet. So, you know, that's something to consider. I don't think it amounts to much because usually in these instances with the lack of a good wave development, which we don't seem to have, uh, at least on the NAM, that the precipitation would just cut itself right off. Now, I'm going to widen out because I know there's a few, a number of you that are watching from other areas. So let's go to the full U.S. view, and I'll go to the GFS so you can get a smoother look in terms of what's forecast to happen. So let's back it up here. And, you know, we have a number of winter storm warnings up for parts of the Midwest, and you've got blanket snow across Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, Iowa, Minnesota, and the Dakotas. You have frozen and freezing precipitation in and around Chicago. 
um, because of where the low center tracks it tracks pretty close to there so uh, they may have you may have some warm issues there and you can see up in northern New England you get into some snow then it all changes to rain almost all it changes to rain virtually uh, up into uh, Maine uh, before uh, it uh, turns colder again and there is a shot of cold air behind it it's actually quite cold uh, up north the air north of Lake Superior but the coldest of that cold air is likely to stay to the north and and, and then once it moves in uh, the high is uh, northeast southwest oriented and then the wave uh, the front is already well to the south as we go into Monday and just moving it along um, we can uh, see uh, that you know it's not really particularly cold in the east I think we're going to go into a transitional period here for uh, uh, the week before Christmas uh, looks like some weather fronts coming through we'll probably have a couple of mild days in the mix uh, and you know uh, depending on one thing or another um, I don't think it's going to be anything exceptional in terms of warmer air it'll be a, a little bit above normal but um, I don't think it's going to be like crazy above normal and then as we uh, head toward uh, the end of the period in the last week you know there's still it still looks kind of transitional to me so uh, we'll see how it plays out in the longer range I'm going to just pop up the upper air here and we'll take a look and see what it does on this run because it changes every single time so I'm not really 100 percent sure and by the way I know if a lot of you look at other weather sites and this is what I really object to um maybe object to is a strong word but you know you know yesterday one of the runs had had the look of a of a snowstorm you know in the last week of December after Christmas a, a big uh, low off the coast and of course you know predictably uh, when you're looking at something that's printed out 16 days uh, in the future on the next run it's gone now if you take a look at the upper air and this is gonna I'm gonna be interested this is why I think it's transitional okay so I'm gonna back it up and you can see here uh, you know this is where we are now so here's that bitter cold air that's moved in we have our weather system that's coming through for uh, Saturday into Sunday it takes a while to get through because of the tilt you see how it's all tilted northeast to southwest so this whole trough is very broad so it needs to swing around in order to start to get improvement which you do get and then the cold air kind of retreats up into Canada when we look at the, the flow in the middle part of next week you know across Canada um, we don't have that that alleyway of bringing cold air down from the northern regions into the United States I mean the flow is basically from west to east you can see it here across Canada here so that's why it relaxes we don't seem to have a true southwest flow or a big ridge building up along the eastern states that does not seem to happen and that's why I don't think it's going to get very warm and then when you look as we go past Christmas at least what this particular run does it does want to start to establish a colder look across Canada again um, this is toward the end of the period but it actually starts the transition back to this around day 10 which is right after Christmas and you can uh, see here on, um, on on this upper air here on this map this is for a New Year's Eve you know you've got that ridge that it keeps wanting to build up into the Gulf of Alaska a deep trough off the west coast and now you've got this flow a little bit more of a polar flow that's coming down out of Canada so this would be as we go toward the end of December uh, into the beginning of January I this is why I really think that this is um, going to be uh, again not a permanent change the pattern to me just seems to be sh taking a breather and then um, realigning itself maybe into something different um, I have said many times when referencing pattern change okay when I say pattern change don't make the assumption that it's going to be um, a dynamic pattern unless I say it's going to be I think it's going to be a dy dynamic pattern and that and then I would tell you that um, this is um, this could be a dynamic pattern down the road but that's down the road one of the things that shows up and we touched upon this yesterday that we have uh, a there is blocking that's developing here but it's an east based block so um, what I mean by that is that the block itself rather than being over Greenland which is where if you're like winter weather you ideally would want it there it's based further east up into Europe and in Siberia so that kind of pu puts into question where the the uh, trough position is in the United States and it also calls into question you know the um, how much cold air can you get because it's not ideal 
here the look is broad enough late in the period that you do have some semblance of a polar flow, but it's not a deep polar flow. It's not coming straight down. Um, it's it's kind of taking a sideways route where some of the cold air goes down uh, further west. But, you know, you do have these signatures here, and you have to be careful because at some point, you know, it's quite possible that these lower pressures in Greenland over time could weaken and that this block could wind up building further uh, westward, uh, in which case we're looking at a much colder flow in the longer term. So I've taken care of the snow maps, short range and long range for you. Have a great day. Um, SSStormChasers.com, Meteorologist, JoeChoppy.com for the latest posts. Long Island uh, forecast on WeatherLongIsland.com. New York City forecast with Angry Ben at um, NYCWeatherNow.com. And uh, for local forecasts for New York City, Long Island, Hudson Valley, um, so, uh, for Connecticut, uh, Eastern Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. Download my weather app. It's free, and you can subscribe to my forecast for just a buck a month. And please, if you've watched this long, I'm assuming you like my YouTube videos. If you haven't subscribed for free to my YouTube channel, please do. I would uh, really love to have you as a subscriber. Uh, there's, uh, It's free. Uh, I will never charge for my videos. And um, thank you again for all the engagement. It's very busy for me the next couple of days, so I will try to get to your, um, your posts uh, and uh, comments on my YouTube videos as quickly as I can.